praises up to the Lord today. Come on, lift your voices and give him praise. Give the Lord praise. He's a glorious God. He's an awesome God. He's a faithful God. We worship him. I 
broken pieces of my life he brought me you want him. Sometime in the midst of trouble, all God want to hear you do is cry out, help me. All God wants you to do is talk to him. You know, in a relationship, the worst thing that could ever happen is communication. You stop talking. That's a sign. God never stops talking, so we should never stop talking to him as we're walking by the way, as we're going in and out. Somebody say amen. amen. We should never stop talking. The Bible says that he came down in the cool of the day and he communed with Adam. The Bible says that he walked with Enoch. He walked with them. He walked with them. God sent the Holy Spirit so that he could walk with us, so that he could talk to us, and we could have fellowship with him daily. Somebody say amen. amen. That's a little nugget. That didn't cost you anything. That's free. Hallelujah. From the book of Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, starting at the first verse. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and then I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in his hand of the potter in the hand of the potter so he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make every now and then we have to go back we have to commune with God and we have to get better in getting better God will show us what's wrong with us God will help us to become better God will help us to have a new attitude God will help us to grow and to mature and to be stronger so today we're going to pray God make me over make me over you're the potter you're the clay. Life has marred me. Life has hurt me. Life has scarred me. I got some scars. Anybody got any scars? But God is the repairer. God is the healer. Yes, there is a bomb in Gilead. And there's a bomb in church on fire today. Hallelujah. Healing is in the house today. Deliverance is in the house today. The potter is in the house today. He wants to make you better. He wants to make you over. He wants to give you a new attitude. He wants to make you rise he will make us rise he make us lay down in green pastures he give us everything we need hallelujah so we're going to pray our father according to your power according to your authority according to your authority according to your grace and mercy according to your grace and mercy god make me better god make me better thou art the potter thou art the potter i am the clay i am the clay make me better make me 
me better than I was yesterday. Than I was yesterday. Make me better. Make me better today. Today. In the name of Jesus, in make that your prayer. Call la basata la ke. Ora ba la la mo se na na na. Oh God, thou art the Potter, and I am the clay. This life has marred me. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me. Make me better. Make me better, God. Make me better. Call la basata la ke. Ora ba la 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 mo se na na la basa. Come on and lift up your voice and pray. Zota la ke la 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 masata la ke la la ba. Ora ba si lo la la mana ya la la la. Make me Lord. Make me accepted in the beloved. Make me Lord a vessel unto honor. Make me Lord. Make me Lord. Hey kabala ya la 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 bo se. Zeta la ke ba ba ba. Ora ba si to lo ke. Oh ba 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 ya la 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 masa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. From Psalms, from Genesis 39 and 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Starting at the first verse. And Jesus was brought, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, to Potiphar, and an officer of Pharaoh's, captain of of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought them down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. We're going to pray that God will give us elevation, divine elevation, divine elevation. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father according to your power, according to your power, according to your authority, according to your, authority, according to your grace and your mercy, to your grace and your mercy give, us give us divine elevation. Give us divine elevation. Give us anointing to excel. Give us, anointing to excel. Give us divine elevation. Give us divine elevation. And give us the anointing to excel. To In the excel. name of Jesus, the lift up your voice and make that your prayer. So Joseph even excelled in the jail. Father, cause us to excel. Cause us to rise. Give us the anointing that breaks every yoke, God. Break every yoke in our life. Break every fetter, God. God. Break every chain and cause us to excel, God. To move, God. Give us speed, God. We need speed, God. We need speed, God. Oh, God, give us speed, God. Oh, God, in the inner man. Give us speed in the inner man, God. Cause us to excel. Cause us to rise. Cause us to move forward, God. Cause us to rise and take our place in this community. Cause us to rise and take our place in this world. Cause us to rise, God. And fulfill your purpose in the earth. Cause us to rise, God. Cause us to rise, God. To our divine destiny. Cause us to rise, God. Oh, God, we look to thee. Heart the finish of our faith. We look to thee, because all power is in your hand. Oh God, cause us to rise. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Isaiah 58 and 10. This be my last prayer. Jesus. Isaiah 58 and 10. If thou draw out the soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noon day. Recover of glory. Recover your glory. We're going to pray that God would recover, that we would recover yes, our glory. Yes. 
God would restore our glory. Yes, Lord, yes. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father according, to your power, according to your power, according to your authority, to your authority restore, the glory restore the glory that we've lost. That lost. Restore, the, restore glory the glory that's been stolen. That's been restore stolen. the glory restore to our lives. In the name of Jesus. Come on and make that your prayer. Restore the glory, God. Restore the glory the glory in our life, God. Cause us to shine, God. Cause us to shine, God. Cause us to shine. Zotala ke la 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 ba. Kora basi la 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 makai. Kola ba la 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 mose la la ke. Kova ba ba ya la 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 mose la ke. Zotaka ya la 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 ba shine. Cause us to shine. Cause us to recover all. Cause us to recover our glory. Restore the glory, God. Restore the glory, God. In the name of Jesus. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Are you excited to be in the house of God this morning? Hallelujah. Are you excited for what God is doing in our yes, days? Lord, Lord, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of our Father, our Apostle Dr. David Philemon, I welcome you into God's presence. Yes. It has been announced that our anniversary will be taking place in the month of October, starting from October 22nd. And in a very few, I'll be leading us into some prayers concerning the anniversary. The word of God said that God goes before us and smoothens the way and flattens the mountains. Amen. We are going to be praying for the anniversary. The theme of the anniversary said so there's, there's an army rising up. We are going to be praying, Father, have your ways upon the anniversary. Have your ways upon the anniversary. Let there be divine provision needed for the celebration. Let there be divine provision needed for the celebration. Amen. Amen. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your, power, by by your, your grace, O oh Lord, grace, we oh Lord. lift up our 13th anniversary our to your throne of grace, O oh Lord. Lord. We pray that you draw men and women from all walks of life to join the glorious celebration. We pray that you bring forth men and women that are supposed to be a partaker of what you are doing. Father, draw men and women, O Lord Jesus, to the anniversary. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask God to draw his people for the anniversary. Ask God to draw people. Father, we lift up our anniversary to your throne of grace. We lift up our anniversary to your throne of grace, O Lord. Draw men and women, O sweet Holy Spirit. Bring forth the celebrators. Bring forth men and women who will celebrate your goodness. Bring forth men and women who will celebrate your faithfulness. Father, draw men and women, O sweet Holy Spirit. Draw men and women, O Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Next, you are going to be praying for divine provisions. Father, let there be divine provisions for the celebration. Let there be divine provision, O oh Lord Jesus. Let there be provision, O oh Holy Spirit. Let there be divine provisions. Let there be divine provisions for every necessity needed for the yes, celebration. Lord, yes. Provide unto us, O oh Lord. Your words that you are more than able to provide unto us. Your words that you provide unto us our need. Our God is able to supply unto us our needs. Yes. Father, every need that we need for the necessary celebration, provide unto us, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Say for the name of Jesus, Father, the name of Jesus. by your power and authority, by your, power, by by your, your grace, O oh Lord. Lord. We lift up our 13th anniversary. Our 13th anniversary. We lift up the anniversary, O Lord Jesus, to your, of Jesus to your throne of grace. And we pray for divine provision, for divine, divine provision. provision for the celebration. Open provision. your mouth and begin to pray. Oh, Father, we pray for divine provision. We pray for divine provision. Let there be divine provision, O oh Lord Jesus. Let there be divine provisions. Ilekwa Shanda Gabra 
Pandala Brada, Ibrahim Mekwasha Dala Tusa, Lende Kwasha Pandala Bragadia, Ibrahim Bragadosa, Mekwasha Daga Bragadala Parasia, Lendos Bragadia La Kwasha Tia Kwasaria. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus, the, the, the theme said there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. And when you uh, and when you talk about army, there are necessary equipments that you have to have for you. There are necessary supplies that you have to have as an army. You can't just go and be an army. You have to have certain equipment. We are going to cry out to God, Father, equip men and women for their rising. Equip the yes, army Lord. that rises, Lord Jesus. Let Glory them be necessary equipment, O Lord Jesus. Equip them, O sweet Holy Spirit. Yes, equip them through your word. Equip them through your impartation. Yes. Equip them in all areas of life for their rising. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your, power, by by your, your grace, O Lord, grace, o Lord as, you as you are raising men and women over the course of the anniversary. Anniversary. Father, we pray that you Father, equip them. That you Father, equip we pray them. that you equip we them. You equip, equip them, O sweet Holy Spirit. Holy equip Spirit. them for your use. Equip, equip them for your use. use. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Valika Parase, and let to Asha Bragadia, and let to Zubregan, and let to Sudea, and let the Gabrega de Gabrega de Le Superabarabarabarabara, Zequatia Quasha Patalada, and Dusha Gabraga de Sukatalade, Le Susuka Bregan de la Tuasha, and let to Zoko Petelede, para let the divine equipment do your word, let the divine equipment do impartation, Le Sopetelegeba, and Saga Bragadia. Gadala Parasia, the Zubia Cassette Telerosa, Lika Pragadala Barabos, Father, we pray for divine equipment. We pray for divine equipment. We pray for divine equipment. In Sapata La Barabosa, Linda Sapragadala Pragadala Barasi, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we celebrate you, O Holy Spirit, cause the church to go from glory to glory. Let us go from glory to glory. Let there be a new level in glory. Let us let, let us experience a new level of your glory. Cause us to go from glory to glory. Glory from glory to glory does not mean that you have never seen the glory of God before, but you have seen the glory of God before. But this time you are seeing another level of glory, another dimension of glory. We are going to be praying, Father, let us go from glory to glory. Cause us to go from glory to glory. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by, the name of by Jesus, your power and authority, by your, power, by your Lord, grace, O oh Lord, grace, as we Lord, celebrate you, Holy Spirit, we as we celebrate the ten years of your faithfulness, as we celebrate the ten years of your goodness, as we celebrate the ten years of, 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 your, of, of your glory, Father, cause us to go from glory to glory, cause us to go from glory to glory, open your mouth and begin to pray. Pandia Jabraga de Aguasuzi, in Letu Jabraga de la Tazafara, and Letu Jabraga de la Quatosia, in the Bregadu Zupata la Varase, and Bregadegadegadegadegade, Saka Pataka Palabarabos, in Santa Cabraga de la Quasadea, Lesegadu Supreme de Leto Japarada, in Bregade Letua Saparada, and Bregadegadegadegadegadegade, Lendua Zapata la Bragada, in Tua. Santiago Suzelete Robas, Liqua Santiago Supragada, in Lende Gebrega de Letu Zapararia, in Bregen de Legua Satalada, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, as we go from glory to glory, as we go from glory to glory, cause your people to find and take their place. Cause your people to find and take their place in, the, in your move. Let your people take their place in the greatest move of God. Let your people take their place. Let our congregation take our place. Let our members take, our, take their place. Let our partners take their place. Father, cause us to take our place in, in your move. Cause us to take our place. 
Cause us to take our place, oh Lord Jesus, in the upcoming revival. Cause us to take our place in destiny. Say, for the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your grace, oh Lord, as you are raising an army in this generation, as you are raising an army in total fire, oh Lord, cause us to take our place. Cause us to take our place, oh see, Holy Spirit. Cause us to take our place, oh Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let Garose, il le brega du jaguatia casha parada, e brega de gusun talika shaparade, para cause us to take our place, cause us to take our place, oh Lord, le guasha tia casha, isha kabra gandia la guasi da la kotosia, le susi valinda kapra sundia la tefira, e se ke brega de le kotosuni, il la guatia casha parada, e se le de goro goro goro, para cause us to take our place in destiny. Cause us to take our place in the kingdom advancement. Cause us to take our place, so Lord Jesus. Lende ge pregere. Isa pala bara bara bara. Zakwatia kashende le Rusia. Ishende le ge pregere gusuli. India gabra gada la barosia. Lende ge pregere le ge berosi. Lendu zapala bara gada gada. Isa panda la guasatia kasode. Lende ge pregere dia kusala. Isa kwatia ndu zagalia. Le pregere. Do you pass your nose over to Lori? Let go, sing a gap, break it, let go, shut up. Is a gap, break it, let it go, dead. Let go, shut up, gap, pull up, bara bossy. India, go, she cut your gasuzi. Let go, shut up, brother, let go, kasega. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we are going to be praying. Of, we are going to be praying for the speakers of the anniversary. Those ones are then to speak for the anniversary. We are going to be praying that God impact into them the word that they, they are going to give unto us. The word that is going to cause us to experience a new level of life. The word that we need to, to go from glory to glory. Yes. The word that we need to rise. It is through the word of God that you rise. Our Father said that the word of God is a, is, is a maker of men. Father, whatever necessary word that we need, whatever necessary word that we need, Prepare unto us, O Lord Jesus. Prepare the word for us, O Lord Jesus. Do your servant so sweet, Holy Spirit. Prepare the word unto us, O Lord Jesus. That undiluted word that will cause me to take my place in destiny. That undiluted word that will cause me to take my place in kingdom advancement. Amen. Say for the name of Jesus. By your power and authority. By your power, by, by your, your grace, O Lord. Lord. We are praying for all the speakers of the, the anniversary of the Holy Spirit. Impact unto them your grace. Impact on to them your undiluted word needed for your people. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lekwasha pata la kapraga, ibrega de lekwasha pata la dia. Lesusa kapraga de shoko torobos, isepo dia kasu de leke tafarasi. Lepata kapraga dia kashala dia, ele dia kapraga di shuta la ba. Isepo dia kapraga de leke de leke de leke de leke. Lusa kapraga dia la para para para. Father, send fire, send multiplication of praise unto all the speakers. Let's get it, get it, get it. Isha kada la kapra kada, kapanda la kapra kada, kapra kada. Kero shepe tele de kero sha, let's ya kwasha kada kapra kada. Kapra kada la tuza, isho pele la tuze, ili kwasha kada. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, prepare a table before your people as they as they begin to celebrate you. As we celebrate you, O Lord, prepare a table before us. Prepare a table before us. A table of gladness. A table of joy. A table of your sweetness. Prepare a table of blessings before us. Prepare a table before us, O Lord Jesus. If you celebrate God, you shouldn't experience sorrow. You, 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 shouldn't, you, you shouldn't experience backwardness. You shouldn't experience grief. Celebration is because you are celebrating because, because God has shown himself faithful unto his people. It's been 13 years of greater to, from, from glory to glory. Greater work, signs, miracles, and wonders. Father, as, we, as your people celebrate you, prepare a table before the Lord Jesus. Prepare a table of feast, O Lord Jesus. Spiritual and physical. Spiritual and physical. Prepare a table. 
let no man return back the same way they came in. Let no one return back the same way they came yes, in. Lord. As we celebrate you, oh Lord Jesus. Yes. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. By your power and authority. By your power and authority. By your grace, oh Lord. As we celebrate you. As we celebrate the two years of your glory. As we celebrate the two years of your faithfulness. As we celebrate the two years of your greater works in our lives. Father, prepare a table of feasts before us. Prepare a table of feasts before us. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, prepare a table before us. Prepare a table of fishing before your people. Prepare a table of fishing before church of fire. Prepare a table on behalf of your servant. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus, the word of God said, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and call them bars of iron. We are going to be praying, we are going to be binding the spirit of distractions over the anniversary. We are going to be praying and binding the spirit of distraction. Anything that will try to hinder us from celebrating what God has been doing in our lives, we bind such in the name of Jesus. Anything that is going to stand as a hindrance in our celebration, we bind such in the name of Jesus. He said, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. God is going to level down every wicked path of the enemy in front of our anniversary, in front of our celebration. Say, for the name of Jesus, by, the name of Jesus. by your power and authority, by your power. By your grace, O Lord, we bind every spirit of distractions in the course of the anniversary. Over the anniversary, we bind the spirit of distractions and we release the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bind any spirit of distractions or any spirit of hindrance that will try to hinder people from celebrating you. We bind the spirit of hindrance that will try to hinder the people from coming to the glorious celebration. We bind the spirit of excuse. We bind the spirit of excuse yes. that will try to come in, come, come in the lives of our congregation and be a hindrance into what God is about to do in their lives through the glorious celebration. 13 years of anniversary is not just celebration. It's a new level in life. The church is moving up. 
and there are certain times when you are not when you are not sensitive to what God is doing. You are displaced yes. because the, the, because of the spirit of distraction. You yes. are displaced or you are misplaced as the, as the church is going from glory to glory. There are certain people that used to be with us a, a, a few years and our father told us, it was a divine instruction about two or three years ago that we should pray so that we can, as a church is going to a new level, we are not replaced, displaced or misplaced. We are going to be praying for our members. Father, any spirit of hindrance, any spirit of hindrance in their life, so Lord Jesus, yes, that Lord. will try to hinder them from being a partaker of what you are doing. Yes, Father, Lord. we bind such in the name of Jesus. We bind such in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your grace, oh Lord, we bind the spirit of distractions, we bind the spirit of hindrance in the lives of our congregation, of our congregation from being a part of what you are doing what you are over doing. the course of over the anniversary. The anniversary. Father, we bind every Father, spirit every of distractions. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, we bind the spirit of hindrance, we bind the spirit of distractions in the lives of our members. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for divine separation upon anything that will try to hold back the lives of people in Sofia International from glowing from glory to glory as we celebrate you. Sometimes separations is not, is not by a mistake. It is by divine ordination. In order for Abraham to go to a new level in life, Lord had to be separated. Lot had to be separated. Abraham had love for Lot, but because Lot was covering his, Lot was being a hindrance. Lot means covering. Lot was being a hindrance into his next move in destiny. Father, separate yes, us from yes. any any man, any woman, yes, Lord, any yes. event, any yes. type of connection that will try to be a hindrance unto your yes, people Lord, yes. to rising. We, se we separate us, oh Lord Jesus. Separate us, oh Lord Jesus. Say for the name of Jesus. By your power and authority. By your, power, by your grace, oh Lord. By your grace, oh Lord. Separate church of fire international from every hindrance, from every spirit of hindrance, from every connection that will try to hinder our growth, that will try to hinder our rising. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Shapati Zaparada Ebreke tu la kata parasini Le la katu shatale kosini Inke breke teke 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 La kwa shapati ya kwa shakada Esu salati ya koshe merete Inke kwa shupereke tosuni In Jesus my name we pray In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus Father whatever you are doing in the in, in, Over the course of the anniversary Cause our congregation to become the first partaker of it. Amen. The word of God said that the husband man that laboreth first shall become the first partaker. Yes, Lord. It is an error for us to be here and we are not able to receive what God is doing. But some people that travel from out of state, some people that travel from other or various places joining the celebration receive. The husband man that laboreth, this, this, this work has not been moving only because of the choice man of God. This work has been moving because of you. This work has been moving because of various laborers in this church. The husband man that laboreth first shall become the first partaker. Father, let your people in this congregation, let the people of Chofia International become a full partaker of what you are doing. Let us become a full partaker of what you are doing. Don't, don't let anyone miss out on what you are doing. 
Don't let anyone miss out on what you are doing. Say for the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your grace, so Lord, God such on fire to become a first partaker of the rising of the army. God such on fire international to become first partaker of the growth of this church as we celebrate the 13th anniversary. Father, let us become first partaker. Let our members become first partaker of whatever you are doing through church on fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus, we are going to take one more prayer before our Father comes out to minister. We are going to pray. Father, as your servant comes out to minister, cause us to become a partaker of what you're about to do in this service. Release upon us your spirit of possibility. Release upon us your undiluted word. Release upon us your spirit of possibility for a change of story, for a change of life, for a change of story, for a change of life. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by your power and authority, by your grace, so Lord, as your servant ministers this morning, release upon this service your spirit of possibility through your word. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let the possibility possibility over the lives of your people as your servant ministers. Release possibility. Release possibility. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the name of Jesus. With Jesus' joy, please let us put our hands together as we welcome our Father, our Apostle Dr. David Philemon. Hallelujah. 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 Let's lift our hands and worship Jesus. Go ahead, open your mouth and magnify him. Glorify him. Lift your voices. Magnify him as worthy of our praise. Thank you, thank you, gracious God. Thank him for hearing our prayers. Thank him for the anniversary. Thank him for your portion. Thank him for your portion. Thank you for our portion. Thank you for our portion. We will rise in your name. Adonai. You reign on I say we will rise. We will rise in your name. In your name. Call him Adonai. Adonai. You reign on high. Say we will rise. We will rise in your name.
for you. understand yesterday I talked about the power of one man's sacrifice you may not understand how life works but the scripture shows us I mentioned that on Friday that the serpent the dragon used its tail to bring down one thought of what stars the stars, not the stars on earth, stars that are up in heaven. He used its tail to bring down shining stars. If you are a star, you have to understand there is a war. The enemy wants to keep you as a star, but God wants you to shine as a star. And since there is a warfare, I showed you and I mentioned how that the, the power of the tail. Many don't understand that dimension of spiritual warfare until I opened three other scriptures and you saw that the Bible says that the tail, the tail, the tail had poison. The tail looked like a tail until you look closer you discover that the tail had the head of a snake. How can tail have snake? I showed you that from scripture. That's why you shouldn't be missing services. I said that to say that in life, whenever God wants to make you something or somebody, he gives you multiple opportunities for encounters because it is your encounters that determines whether you'll be counted or not. Your value in any move of God is determined by how God revealed himself to you and what aspect of God was revealed to you or is revealed to you. You understand? And so what God does is to see to it that there are events and services so that you come often and often and if you think that when I attended one, I won't attend the other, you are the one missing because when God came down to earth, he didn't pretend to ignore the powers that work on earth. So what did he do? He came down as God. And so he spent what? 40 days fasting and prayer. And afterward, every single day, he went out to pray. He went out to pray. From This is God. The one who the Bible says he, he can destroy with the blast of his nostril. And everything is gone. Yet on earth on earth he had to go to pray from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. every day your lord and master you see why many people have been defeated because they don't understand operations of the spirit world and things that go on in the spirit realm you may think that this world is just what you see it's not true 
The young lady will be in church today and she probably will testify in the second service. When she came to this church, she had cervical cancer and she told me, no, first I called her by prophecy and I prayed and I prayed and I told her in her ears. I said, that which you don't even want anyone to know. I prophesied. And she went now, she went back. She's totally healed. No, that's not the thing. Look at the one, one very interesting thing that happened. One funny apostle, so to speak, called her and said, no, don't be going to that African church because I don't know who told them this is an African church. This is an international church, right? This is an African church. He said, because that pastor, they must be using some African voodoo. I said, oh yeah, voodoo. If it's easy to use African voodoo, here to Africa, if you want to fly economy, prepare your three, four thousand dollars. You can go and come back and go and look for voodoo. Right? Africa is just here now. Go to Africa and get voodoo for yourself. If it's voodoo, right? So the point, the point is that I I, I looked at the situation. He said to her, Don't you see? And maybe he's watching this service. I don't know. Is you I'm talking about? You can come here for our anniversary to be delivered. He said to her, he said. He said, don't you see how that he talks about power, deliverance, everything. I said, I said, he's, he's an idiot too. Sorry. I don't know what kind of horse he is. Because if a man talks about power, what do you want? Is it weakness you want? Is it stupidity you want? How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with stupidity and with weakness. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in all thy ways through the greatness of thy weakness. Uh, Psalm 66 verse 3 Through the greatness of thy weakness Your enemies will Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves The enemy does not listen to any language Only power The only language Satan understands Is the language of power So when you see people Who are on a mission to oppose power ministry They are working for Satan Oh yeah, that's the ministry of the Pharisees now. After Jesus healed the woman who was bowed over 18 years attending their service, they couldn't do nothing. The day Jesus showed up, she got healed. You know what? We don't do this, this, thing like that. Huh? Yeah. Because they don't have it. So this guy said, he talks about power. I said, sit and listen to me. If there's one preacher that preaches longer than me, I'm trying to think. Maybe Bishop Jakes. Maybe the one, maybe he's the one that preaches. This is his own, it's even cut down. We are coming up. Uh, we, are, we are learning from them. They taught us so we are, uh, you understand? Uh, oh, my spiritual father, of course, that's in Africa. But here, my father will preach. Oh, no, Kenneth Copeland, yeah. Kenneth Copeland, I see a road in the spirit. <laughs> and when he goes that road, two hours, we are still traveling that road. But you never get tired of the traveling. Are you following me? So, but I preach, I teach. I impart, I release power because I have it. If you're angry, come and let me give some to you. Are you following me what I'm saying? So, so I, so, 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 now he said, the Lord said she should come to, she should come and stay in his church. She used to be with him, you know, all those kind of, used to be, someone introduced her to him and all those nonsense. So, but here's the thing. I now said, it's simple. If I use something, African food, and your cervical cancer, die. <laughs> is it cervical or whatever? Cervical. Cervical cancer. Cervical cancer. Dies. What do you want? Do you want me to return this, the cancer? That, that this man said something to her, he affected her two weeks she didn't come to church. To let you know that the dragon can use its tail to sting somebody and take them down. Is the demon of that cancer that is looking for a way of coming back to the lady. That lady shared her testimony here, John Hill and Liver Service. She came here with cancer, cancer of the breast, cancer of the liver, and all those stuff. So when I was ministering that day, she never told me, but God, God revealed it. And I ministered to her, and we're all here. I asked her to pray for her. We prayed for her, right? She went back. Glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. She went back. Now she went to test. She came back here and testified. What happened? She didn't even know that they didn't tell her that the cancer has spread all over. But their 
scan showed it and they had everywhere this cancer spread and when she went back to the hospital the doctor kept saying what you are what you are a blessed child you are a blessed child and then he now said you are normal the, the, the doctor was so shocked the way she mentioned it she said the doctor said ah hey I can't find it it's not here it's not here no more yeah that's the word no more no more so all the cancer that spread no more the scripture says no man can do such things except the Lord be with him God is with us and we are not ashamed but the reason why we are having such grace is because of the price paid for alignment I told her call that apostle tell him apostle I want to do night vigil with you he will ask you what's night vigil because in the night it's either watching movie, drinking stuff or sleeping or doing whatever he wants to do some people are busy praying some people don't sleep at night just to carry grace for the liberation of people in the day so when you see us stand and we are screaming and preaching and releasing power, it's not because of anything. Sometimes, oh my goodness, we're there with my son Emmanuel yesterday. When we went out, we we're coming back. I was sleeping in the car. I I don't snore, but I snore. So he told me, Daddy, you are sleeping, sleeping. As soon as we came to my office, he said, I'm turning off the light. My body was tearing me. No. The service, I have to work. Then I look, I say, okay, at least I have two more hours before my prayer time. It was 10 o'clock. I have two more hours before I wake up at 12 o'clock to start praying. And he turned up like, he said, you have to sleep. And I sat down there and I slept a little bit until the time came for me to wake up. Our bodies, that's why Paul said, though our outward man perish, our inner man is renewed day by day. We don't arrive at power by mistake. You don't arrive at power by mistake. That's why when it comes to the issue of your destiny, you don't negotiate. You don't negotiate. Jesus paid the price. The Bible says, if by reason of one man's offense, sin entered the world, by reason of one man's obedience, righteousness must enter. Life comes through righteousness. So that means there is a way a man of God obeys God for his congregation to enjoy the blessings of God. Amen. Are you following me? There's a way. There's a way a man of God aligns himself. But much more than that, yesterday the Lord spoke to me. He said, say to them, they are not just ordinary people. The anointing was going to turn non-entities into entities. So by virtue of the service, the impartation, God turned us into entity. We were closing the service. The Lord opened my eyes to see me handing over water to people. And I'm like, Lord, we just did anointing today. What about the water thing? What are you showing me? And he showed me, he said, in the third service, you will give them water. And he spoke to me about that water. Now, this is what I'm trying to say. God was so angry. We read that yesterday, right? With the entire land. And they had made some very crazy, crazy mistake. The men were sleeping with the Moabites because when Balaam and Bela conspired to destroy the Israelites, there was nothing. He said, we have not found iniquity in Israel. He said, there is no enchantment, no divination, no curse, no spell, nothing against Israel will prosper. I'm just prophesying over somebody now. I am prophesying there is no enchantment, no divination, activities of hell. There is no tail of the dragon that will be able to bring you down. Amen. I'm talking because I'm, I'm, I want to deploy what God gave to me. It's the right of my sons and daughters to enjoy my covenant with God. And to enjoy the benefits of my spiritual lineage. And because life is a journey, if you think, if you think it, that spiritual lineage is not important, if you think that grace and impartation is not important, watch and see. After a short while, you get tired. After a short while, the enchantment, divinations find a way of bringing you down. After a short while, the fact that you are prospering gets some people mad and angry. We were here yesterday. Pastor Michelle is there. Some of us were here. When we're trying to work on this, when the what do you call that person, the person of the town of Cicero came in, inspector of the town of Cicero came in, they came in to attend our community outreach program. 
and was surprised that we weren't holding it. Ah, uh-uh. what happened? And they were surprised. What's going on? By the time we checked, 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 we were talking. We said, ah, uh-uh. they did. They, they told us. They made it look as if we were committing sin. We've done this thing four years consistently, and we've been blessing the community. And then suddenly, by the time we looked down the matter, who were the ones that blocked the community service? Is the so now they can't stand, but guess what? We will rise in your name, Adonai. You reign. Hear me, hear me. So the Lord was mad at the Israelite men because when that wizard, that sorcerer, tried to destroy them. And he tried to curse them. As soon as he opened his mouth, he started blessing them. He couldn't curse them. No one can curse you. I said, no one can curse you. I said, no one can curse you. Hear me. No apostle, no prophet, no witch, no wizard, no lizard, no agent of darkness, no man born of a woman, no spirit, no demon, whether witches or wizards, will be able to curse you. I am your shepherd. God put me farther over North and South America. And I declare you will rise. You cannot fail. You won't go down. You will excel in the name of Jesus. Don't let nobody scare you. Don't put your life in the hands of a pastor that cannot pray. Amen. If he can't pray, he doesn't have power to curse you. Are you with me? I love men of God. I respect and I so I don't like talking because my greatest passion is for men of God. But but for men of God to start threatening members because they are coming somewhere. Is there anyone in this church that I've ever called and threatened for going to another church? I know who I am. I know what I have. I am the true shepherd. I know my own sheep will hear my voice. There's nowhere my sheep go to. When you go somewhere else and you sit down, you will be blessed by many things. But a time comes, you will say, uh, I know my apostle. Amen. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I'm not afraid. My sheep will know my voice, and they always come home. We have a destiny together to fulfill. Amen. So, when this enchanter couldn't bring the people down, guess what he did? He now gave them advice. He advised them. He said, The only way to bring these people down is to bring women. Now, for your information, women are a blessing. But Satan always like to use what God wants to use in helping to hurt. God said, hey, Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. I'll give you a helper. Boom. He brought Eve. The same Eve that was sent to help. Satan came and said, uh-huh. Let's do the work together. The moment a woman listens to the devil, that woman can ruin God's kingdom. I'm not kidding you. It was one tiny lady that destroyed, that stopped the, one of the greatest move of God on the earth called Azusa Street Revival. The kind of revival that fire was literally seen on the head of people. Los Angeles. That started in 1900, 1913. This man of God prophesied that in 1913 he prophesied that there will be a mighty move of God a hundred years later. Than, uh, that is greater than, than the Azusa Street Revival. It was his secretary that thought he will marry him. That's why your motives must be Right. Well, you can't be serving God with wrong motives. Pu- purify your motives. Throw away nonsense. Paul said, I long to know nothing among you but Christ and him crucified. When you attend a church, I'm telling you, Jesus is our focus. Are you following me? If there's anything God told you, you must lay it on his altar. When you have ulterior motive, it will lead you to doing stupid things and it will even make you an enemy of God. You cannot benefit from a pastor you don't like. But when like move from like to lost, you destroy yourself. So when lost come in, send it back. Are you following me? Normally you are a human being, so things will come. When this thing come, fight it. 
Because if you don't kill it or send it back, it may end up killing you. You understand what I'm saying? So, but the motives must be pure. And this lady, because William Samuel ended up not marrying her, he married someone else. She hijacked, she had the data, she had everything in, the, in her custody. Hijacked the data, hijacked the newsletter, hijacked everything about the ministry. Send them a wrong letter, and that was how the move started dying. I wonder what part of hell God will put her now. I wonder how a tiny foolish person out of the fact that one man didn't marry you, you will stop a global move of God because you have no fear of God. And that's why we're entering. This is my fasting that I've entered. Hey, don't joke, oh. Don't joke. This month, uh, next month, next month, our uh, power night is called judgment night. Uh, those judgment that we kill with this one, you will die by fire. Are you following me? So it's going to be a judgment night. It's going to be a night of destiny release. If the witch fighting your glory is about to be born, that witch will die. I said that witch will die. You have to understand. So this man lied to the people and deceived the people. He said, send the women. So the women were not just the reason why God killed the Israelites. It was because the women came, the men slept with them, but guess what? The women brought their idol. That was the whole assignment. They brought their idols, say, hey, come on now. The man has tasted some kind of uh, uh, banana and some kind of mixed fruits now. Eh? Uh, if, if, uh, uh, dog. He has tasted some mixed fruit, mixed wine, mixed wine. So all the men tasted. The we, Israelite women, they didn't used to take a shower well. They, 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 you know, like many of many Christians, they just think that once you speak in tongues, everything is there. Eh? And by the way, this next month, I'll have another singles uh, uh, meeting. And this one is marrying. I want to marry ASAP. ASAP. A-S-A-P. I want to marry. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, so I will have it by fire. When we did the last one, as at from the last one to today, three people already got marriage partner. Correct one, serious one. Anyway, so this is where little women they didn't used to take a shower well. They would just relax and they were just like that. But the Moabites, those women, they knew how to dress well, use their stuff, they would dress nice. And so these Israel men were coming from the bush all of a sudden. Ah uh ah. -uh, they look at women, their own women who just do mm. <laughs> okay, leave that but the Israel, the Moabites, they were nice they would, right? they would wear their lipstick they would wear their color perfume they dressed nice and they showed up, and then these Israeli men saw these women and they tasted mixed fruit and from there hey, they said this one is different oh yeah, though. and they said come next time, next but guess what? As soon as the girls got the minds of the men, then the main mission came. They brought their idols. Yeah, you see all of this? I got it. But you know what, buddy? I ain't giving you none of this. Why, baby? That's my God. Worship. Ah, God forbid. I'm an Israelite. I cannot worship any other God. I know, I know, I know. But check this out. Remove that from the TV, okay? Ah, and, 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 and the guy said, that's, that's not enough, really? Okay, check this out. And, and the guy said, no, I will, I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not. Okay, I'll do it once. I will not, okay, okay, okay. So the guys went and this, ah, they looked, oh, nobody's looking, nobody knows that I'm buying down to an idol. And they went down. It. And before you know, it became their strategy of invasion. And the people that could not be cursed ended up cursing themselves. That's what the devil does. If you can't put sickness in your body, he will get you to curse yourself. You feel tired in your body. I'm so, I'm so, my bones are killing me. Keep cursing yourself. They will soon begin to kill you. You know, I don't know. I can do all of this. He knows he can't stop your finances. And he makes you begin to 
use your mouth or your actions to curse your finances. God wants to make you a mother billionaire and you believe the prophecy and you can't pay a tithe of $1,000 because it's too big for you. Who will give you a tithe of 100000 if you can't pay a tithe of 1000 because it's too big for you? So Satan looked for ways and guess what? This man started dying. Everyone got, got angry and in one day, 24,000 men died and the, the death continued until a young man called Phineas. Phineas and Moses were praying and Phineas looked and there was his brother that was sleeping with this woman and Phineas got mad took his spear and the Bible says he thrust it into his brother and the Moabites were men and as soon as he killed them God stopped immediately God said that's good Phineas has stopped my anger the New Living Translation he said, because of what he did. Now, to the Israelites, Phineas just did something. But to Phineas, he has just lost something. This was his own relative. The person he was used to. person he was close to. person he would talk to. But it cost Phineas, his wayward brother, to secure lives of other people. One man paid the price. An entire nation enjoyed the benefits. You don't know what God is doing, but I know what he's saying to me. He said, son, the price you are paying will never be in vain. And he's saying, the people I'm using you to raise, they are entities. You guys are the one paying the price. You are the one paying the price. New Living Translation. You are paying the price. You are paying the price. And whenever the devil tells you that it's too much, no, refuse to accept that lie. I'm going to use some few minutes to share very quickly, but I want us to receive this prophetic word. One man paid the price. Phinehas, son of Eliza, and grandson of Aaron, the priest, had turned my anger away from the Israelites by being hazelious among you. No, go back please. By being hazelious among them as I was. I was as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended to do in my zealous anger. Go to the next verse. Now, tell him that I am making my special covenant of peace with him. One man, he stopped the wrath of God. But guess what? God didn't just say I'm satisfied about the fact that you helped others. He said, I'm raising you as an entity. I'm saying to someone, it's impossible for you to die in the shadow of the coming revival. It's impossible for you to just be in the background or be somewhere behind the scene. God said, I know you like being behind the scene, but it's time I'm bringing you to the forefront. I'm bringing you to the limelight. I'm bringing you as the head. You can't be the tail. The serpents and the scorpions might hurt but you won't be hurt. Somebody shout amen. When we pay prices, God honors our prices. I don't know what your Christianity is costing you, but very soon, you will see the benefits. If you give up because it's too expensive, you will die in the wilderness. If you give up, you will get stuck in the wilderness. If you give up, you will, the Bible says, one of the shortest messages that Jesus preached, remember Lot's wife. That's it. Remember Lot's wife. Many people have the spirit of Lot's wife. They are zealous and as soon as something captures their mind, they turn back. They remember their past, they turn back. They remember things and they turn back. Fear makes them turn back. Remember Lot's wife. So, don't give up. Keep on pressing. 
if Abraham made it, you are going to make it. The Lord spoke to me very clearly. He said, I've entrusted you. It's an entrustment. I've entrusted you now with the grace, with the unction that forbids anyone that is connected to you and serving your ministry, serving your assignment to go down. Are you following me? That means no one, no power, no force, no element can take you down. It's impossible. That means if you are not going down, you won't be stagnant either. You are going up. Spiritually, you are going up. I say you are going up. So there might be serpents and, and dragons that are using their tails to bring down orders. It brought down one third of the stars of heaven. My question is, why couldn't it bring down all of the stars of heaven? There are some people you can't take down. No matter how devilish you are, there are some people you can't take down. You didn't hear that. Why couldn't he bring down all of the angels or all of the stars of heaven? Revelation chapter 12. He used its tail to bring down the world one third of the stars of heaven. He brought them down to the earth. I don't know the tail assigned to bring others down. Down with sickness and disease. He died. Applying any kind of wicked things. Poverty, lack and want, heart disease, body kind of stroke or any kind of affliction, financial negative situation, relationship complication, whatever it is, a sign to bring others down. Listen to me, there is a covenant, there is a covering, there is an agreement and God has said, those that are truly connected to me, connected to my assignment, the same way he told Abraham, the same way he told Isaac, Isaac, the same way he told Jacob and guess what he told Isaac he said Isaac because of your father because of your father Abraham Genesis 26 he said because your father Abraham obeyed me Genesis 26 1 2 and 3 I, Isaac was about to make a wrong move Isaac didn't even pray Isaac went down and was on his way to Egypt and guess what that night God showed up there is a covenant that prevents people from going down and I'm here to say to you even if I close this service right now by the power of what I have with my maker by the power of God with my spiritual lineage the power that is sealed with the power and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ no power can bring you down in the name of Jesus Amen. forget about going down the only caution is don't take yourself down. Don't take yourself down. You will take yourself down. And I'll show you a few things in a few minutes. It's possible for you to take yourself down. It's possible. Lord, come out. You, your wife, and children. Go, go, go. Lord tried to delay and delay. And finally, he said, go. Don't take anything. Don't look back. I am sent. Angel said, I was sent to take you, take you, take you out. And guess what? He said, you will be safe. And they stepped out on their way. Everyone was going. The Lord said, you are supposed to arrive safely under one condition. Don't look back. But the very thing God said, don't look back. The same woman, wife. The same helper of love. And for your information, that was a good woman. For a woman to be able to raise girls in the midst of an homosexual community. These girls were virgins. No, you didn't get that. The, everybody, every other person was in fact men were sleeping with men, women sleeping with men all kinds of nonsense yet these girls were virgins they had fiancés that they had not married and they weren't married to them and yet they were virgins so that woman was a good woman 
being good is not enough to keep you up. Hear me? Being good is great, but being good is not enough to keep you up. Line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here, a little there. If you don't abide by the divine, by divine practices, by the covenant practices, you can't go up. If everyone is looking forward and traveling, and all you want to do is you think no one is looking, and every little opportunity you have is to sneak, you're looking back. You can fake spirituality, but you can't fake the spirit realm. So what should you do? Make up your mind to be spiritually minded. Make up your mind to follow by faith. If you hear lightnings and thunders and sounds from behind, don't look back. Why? Because behind you is a desolate wilderness. Before you is the garden of Eden. There are people that God is imparting things into, but you have not reached that mature spiritual state where you can resist the tail of the dragon. That's why I'm saying to most of you here, especially those of you that have the privilege of preaching and speaking in places, be careful. Be wise. There are certain altars, my spiritual father will always say, there are certain altars you climb, you climb to preach. That's the end of your ministry. And there are certain people that climb your altars and that's the end of your ministry. But then, for most of us, it's not that you are climbing the wrong altar. It's the fact that you have tempered with a situation that you have not developed spiritual capacity to handle. Now, I want to prophesy to you. I, Emmanuel went with us to uh, this thing, right? To Peoria. I wanted to prophesy to the man. And I was prophesying. But for me to lay hands on him, the Lord said, don't put your hand on him. Hey. I said, okay. I came back. The Lord said, don't put. And everybody was shocked. After that, the Lord said, let him go and sleep on the altar. Because what's fighting him is altar. It's not that you don't have spiritual capacity. But this is a battle you don't want to buy. Because what? The Lord said, he was a re he's a rebellious believer. He wants me to fight his battle. But he's not honoring me. So let him settle it on the altar. So when I started prophesying and talking, people were shocked. If you see him, he looks as if he's the biggest titan in the church. And the Lord said, ask him, do you pay tithe? Um, 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 bam. So me, I'll put my, head on your, my hand on your head. But guess what? That night he stayed there, he repented. Came back the next day. I wanted to minister, the Lord said, don't. At the end, when I did the, the, during the night vigil, as I, I was to minister to him, I now ministered to him. And then, at that time, the Lord said, now he has settled it. This guy now said, yes, I will begin to honor God. I will pay that. I, will do. I asked him to settle in the church. Because he's jangling here, jangling here, jangling here. I said, stay there. And guess what? I ministered to this young man. This man and his wife and everything. They were like, wow. Now, that was one of the craziest move of God and we destroy that and he confirmed the prophecy he belonged to a family of uh, witch doctors so his father insulted the shrine so there were four boys and one person must inherit the shrine the father didn't have spiritual power he's not truly connected to Christ right he's just a regular born again but no power then he went and insulted the shrine. Poof, they killed him. And then the, the, the shrine, the oracle now came and said, they needed his older brother. And the older brother said, no, I'm not going. Poof, they killed him. The other one, in two years, four of his brothers died. He was the only one remaining. I see power entering into you. Amen. You know why I'm telling you this? This darkness has traveled to North America. If you think I'm joking, it has traveled to North America. It has traveled. Wicked witchcraft power working everywhere. You cannot be victim. Amen. Four of his brothers died. He was the next. And everyone was saying, oh, he will die. And all. Anyway, short of the long story, I ministered to him. We came back. Where's Pastor Manu? I said it here in this church. 
One week later, one week, the wizards of the village, the man releasing those things to kill them until he comes back and submit to that thing. That man died mysteriously. But before he died, he started confessing. He confessed and was begging that this man should release him. This is the same man that was about to be destroyed. That wizard died. Because what? There are certain things that you go and you are anointed. Hallelujah. And you lay hands on the bad head. You lose your own head. Yeah. Are you following me? It's called counterattack. But guess what? Jesus told his disciples. I know you have seen little miracles here and there. He said, eh, I'm going. Don't be deceived. That apprentice power you carry, that's not it. Tarry in Jerusalem until you are what? Until you are encapsulated. Until you are over. You are, you are swimming in power. Because if you are not endued with power, you will be grounded to powder. The tail of the dragon is evil. It prevents people from getting to their destination. But there are covenants that you are connected to. Now it becomes your own responsibility not to go down. Not to take yourself down. I won't look back. Woman was good. Lot's wife was good. But unfortunately, she made a wrong move. She turned back. The consequences never said because you are Lot's wife. The consequences never said uh, because you are a good woman. She raised her virgin daughters. She became a pillar of salt. You can take yourself down. But hear me. If God is alive, as I'm teaching you, I'm preaching, I'm ministering to you, even you, the power to take yourself down will die. Amen. So I have time to give you, I, I hope I have a few minutes to give you the things that I have to give to you. The power to take yourself down. I command such powers to be completely paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is he that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. May God begin to walk in you, walk within you, walk around you, walk on you, that your mind, your spirit, your soul, and body will be like what the man of God Solomon prayed when he was still serving God well. He said, oh, that our hearts might be inclined unto you, that we might fear you and do your will. I pray for you. The power to go up and stay up is released in the name of Jesus. I sense this this possibility conference. I sense something and I know that there is a realm that God wants us to operate from. He doesn't want you to operate from this low level. You have some problem up there God doesn't want you to come from here and you are trying to solve it here. No. God wants you to change dimensions. You change realms. You come up here and you are higher than your problems. I say you are higher than your battles. That's why the scripture says, it says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are higher and greater than what's confronting you. That means you are even greater than the world. You're greater than the enemy. You're greater than the adversary. Is somebody ready to just receive something? I want you to know, no matter what, no matter who tries to bring you down, you will rise in his name. Now you're now. You reign on. Ah, we will, we will. Shots on fire. We will rise. God spoke to me. My sons, my daughters will rise. They can't go down. You can't.
go down, you can't be defeated. You will never be defeated. If I tell me, I don't know. I say we will never you told me my sons my daughters my partners cannot go down no it's impossible so I stand and I release the covenant that keeps men up I release the covenant that raise men and keep them up as we all put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ we know he cannot fail for God has highly exalted him and has given him a name above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee was bowed. We will rise. I say, you Jesus, by your mercies, by your power, by your mercies, and your power, I ask that you lift me up in the spirit, raise me, help me to operate at the highest realm of spirituality. I want to operate at the highest spiritual realm ever. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lift your voice. Open your mouth. Help me to operate at the highest. Spiritual man, ever, 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 yes, Sataya, 
Jesus. Mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Wave your hands and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, I thank you for, for your Bless his up, name. Lord, I appreciate it. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless you. We In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Please sit down for a few minutes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That, that, that oil, that unction came so heavy on me. I just wanted to make sure you receive your portion. Amen. Um, we're going to do this very briefly because I want the instrumentalists to participate in our praise and worship. So I want to do this uh, briefly. I want to share something with us before we go. I've shared, but I want to drop a few points in your hands. In the second service, our guest speaker, Reverend Andrew Bauer, will be speaking in the second service and in the third service. He will speak in the second service, will close the second service, um, uh, I believe God, on time, and then we will go uh, so we can be here for the third service. I sense an expulsion in the third service. So in the third service, yeah, he's going to minister, and I'm going to minister like fireful ministration. Amen. Um, so let me just drop a few things with you guys. The, the theme of the uh, prophetic encounter is what? Is possibilities the journey. Say the journey. So he's going to come and walk on the journey and all of those things. But I really want to let you know that life is a journey. Life is a journey. And as I said, possibilities is a realm. Possibilities is a realm. I said, there are three kinds of world that you can live in. World number one is the world you allow others to build or create for you. People will create their world. It is called living by default. The world you allow people to create for you or you to create for yourself, I mean the world you allow people to create for you or you to create without you in mind. Are you following me? When you see someone who lives without the consciousness of destiny, they are those that will live by default. The second world you can live in, and oh, by the way, when people create the world you live in, they, they won't create it with you in mind. They create it with them in mind. So there are two people now, there are several people in the church now, but if I call two people, say I call Kazim, and I say, Kazim, come and put on my jacket. Guess what will happen to Kazim? My jacket will do what? Swallow him up. And then I look and I said, ah, um, then I call, I say, call Pastor Rally. No, I think Pastor Rally wears my jacket, kind of. But I'm trying to see. Or oh, Bishop, if I call Bishop and I say, come and put on my jacket. The jacket that swallowed up one won't enter the other. Why? It wasn't made with them in mind. When people build their world, there are very few worlds that you enter into that fit into your life. So, you go to the second world. What's the second world? The second world is the world you create no, the world that what others couldn't create. So first is the one they created. The second is the one they couldn't create. There are people that are trying to do things, trying to be things, but because of the violation of certain spiritual principles, they could not do what they wanted to do. 
Many people that you see are unable to do things. They, they are not just unable because life is wicked. It's just because they have violated certain principles. Including you. The world you couldn't create for others, the world others couldn't create for you, is just because of the violation of certain principles. So I'm going to give you, uh, give you these few things. Now, the third world is the world you create by yourself. This is a world you create with the help of God. Except the Lord build the house and labor in vain that build it. That means whatever you're doing and you align with God, you create a world. We call it a customized world. In a customized world, you decide what exists in your world and what you don't want in your world. If you are building your own house, you customize things. Even if it's a small house you are building, guess what? You put what you want. No, I don't want this here. I want this here. But if you decide to buy a house, you are buying what others built. They may have built it with some things you like, but may not be able to put everything you want. That's why people remodel. People put things, they put things, they get this and that. Are you following me? Follow me here. I'm going somewhere. So, there is that customized world that God wants you to build. It is called the world of possibilities. Unlimited possibilities. So, God wants you to build the kind of world where nothing is impossible in that world. Does that world exist? Well, it depends on who is handling the matter. It depends. That world does exist. So, Jesus prescribed what gives access to that world. So, life's journey shouldn't be filled with obstacles and ups and, ups and downs and confusion and complications. Well, they went through the wilderness for 40 years. It's okay. No. Go and check. 40 years was not the custom made world. Their journey from Kadesh Barnea to the promised land was 11 days. They violated certain spiritual principles that kept them in that wilderness for 38 extra years. So they ended up spending 30, 40 years in the wilderness on a journey that was supposed to take them 11 days. 10 to 11 days. Because God has lost his power? No. Because men Jesus said, you, through your tradition, you have made the word of God of none effect. It's possible for the power of God to be all over the place, and yet some people not be feeling the effect of the power of God. Are you following that? So, Jesus said, if thou canst believe all things, nothing excluded in that all things, all things you can capture in your mind. All things you can picture in your mind. If you picture it, you will capture it. All things are possible. To him or her that believe. So, if you are struggling with impossibilities, it's most likely because certain things are out of order. Now, I want you to follow this quickly. Let me use four or five minutes, five more minutes to put certain things in your hands. I'm looking at the story whereby some men showed up. A man showed up with his son. And his son was tormented by spirits. And these guys that have been working with Jesus, they've seen miracles, they've attended healing, deliverance, and restoration service. They've seen all of that. And as a matter of fact, they've also performed some miracles before that time. Suddenly, they brought them a situation. So consider that situation has their journey. Your career 
It might be your journey. Marriage is a journey, right? Health is a journey, right? Financial prosperity is a journey. Everything about life is a journey. So consider yourself has been on a journey. How far you go will determine will be determined by you. So look at Matthew 20, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. That's where the story is. Matthew 7, 16. From verse 16. We will rise in your name Adonai He reign Let's read that together. One to go. Everybody. Uh oh. That's not what I said. Matthew 17 from verse 16. 17 from verse 16. 17 from verse 16. That also speaks. I'm sure that spoke to someone now. All right. Let's read together. One to go. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Pay attention to the word could not. Say impossibilities. This man had a situation and when he brought that situation to his disciples, he expected them to do what their master did or was doing. In your case, it might be your financial life. I believe that before I'm 30, I'm a thousand year millionaire. Now you are 33. And it seems like the money is growing wings. And instead of coming, it's running. What happened? I brought them to your disciples. I brought them to your disciples, but they could not. They could not get married. They could not stay married. They could not be happy. They could not be healthy. They could not make progress. They could not build their own. They could not, they could not, they could not, they could not. Imagine a world filled with impossibilities. God told you you will do something for him. When you were 12, when you were 13, when you were 15, you believed that. Ah! Jesus wasted time. 30, 30, forget it. Before I'm 22, I'm already known all over the world. Now you are 52. They could not. They could not. That's a world of impossibility. So the journey had become a complicated journey. Read on. Let me finish with that. Read on. Everybody read. The next verse. They could not. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him either to me. The same difficult, complex, complicated journey. The same thing. I, I thought that if it didn't work for others, Jesus should be afraid of confronting it. Now, forget about Jesus now. Don't say it's Jesus. Say, husband tried the business and the business didn't work. The natural thing that will happen to a woman is she wants to try it, she might say, hmm, maybe it won't work. Right? I will try, but I don't know. She might act as if she believes, but she might say, maybe it won't work. Oh, you have friends that you all graduated together and there's this company that all your friends applied to get a job. 14 of them applied and they said, we are not hiring. So the natural thing that you should do is to conclude that they are not hiring because we, they could not. They are not hiring. Everything is tight. Everywhere is full. And all of a sudden, something came within you. They said they are not hiring but you say, I'm going to apply all the same. 
They say, who are you? Are you better than us? Are you this? Are you that? They will bring all manner of things, but you say, I am going anyway. Jesus looked at the situation where the disciples could not cure that sickness. He said, bring him to me anyway. When you live in the world of possibilities, you don't allow the failure of others to define the pursuit of your life. No, I don't know who God is talking to. This life is a journey and I don't know who has decided to die in the wilderness just because you saw the giant and refused to see the giant. I will see the graves I will see the possibilities. If you could not, that will stop me from attempting. What you couldn't do, I'm, I was born to do. What you couldn't do, I was born to do. What you couldn't do, I was born to tell. So I will not say just because Mr. A, Mr. B died of sickness, I die with my sickness. If there's cancer in my body, it can kill 1,000 people. But cancer dies. It can survive in my body. Sickness can survive in my body. Poverty can survive in my body. Look at your neighbor. I said to your neighbor, bring him either. Oh no, that was Jesus' statement. Jesus said, that which you couldn't do, bring to me. You are my sick people. You wanted to buy the house. You couldn't buy. Bring to me. You couldn't get the deal, bring to me. You couldn't make progress, bring to me. What others dare, bring to me. What others fear, bring to me. Why this journey of possibility is my journey and I will not let you redefine my journey. I know who I am. I know where I'm going to. Just because you fail doesn't mean I should fail. A thousand shall fall at my right hand and ten thousand at my left. Only with my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. As for me, North America, bring to me. South America, bring to me. Say women can't be married in your family. Bring marriage to me. I'm not gonna run away from marriage because others fail. My daddy's marriage failed. My mommy's marriage failed. I'm the answer to the spell of marital failure. Whatever I gotta do, I will do. Give me that man. Give me that woman. I'll fight every devil until this time begin to walk this journey. Hit your neighbor and said this journey was what? God showed up and he said, you know what? All these men that doubted my abilities, I promise you they will die in the wilderness. Except Refuse to become the nightmare of my generation. What the previous generation failed to do, bring to me. There are certain things, you know, they say in every law there are exceptions. I am the exception. I say, I am the exception. I am the exception. Jesus said, Bring him to me. What others couldn't do, Jesus invited because there was something working within him that had control and walk over what was working outside of him. Bring him to me. Somebody say, bring him to me. Bring that money to me. Bring that money. Bring that money. Bring that money. Bring that house to me. Bring that man. Bring that woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring that job. Bring that school. Bring him to me. They say you can't go to Mexico because your GPA is low. Bring him to me. Mexico, here I come. Bring him. 
the world, you can't graduate because of ABC. Let me tell you, 10 million demons from your mother's village can't stop your career, can't stop your destiny, can't stop your calling. No weapon from the case you shall prosper. Bring them to me. We will rise in your name. I don't know. You ready? Listen. Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. The disciples were rebuking the boy. The disciples were struggling with the situation but Jesus knew what they didn't know if you're going to walk in a world of possibilities listen to these few things number one your world of possibility is a reflection of your revelation what do you know that others don't know what do you know that keeps you strong when everything looks or feels like it's falling apart. Number two, your world of possibility is determined by your wisdom. How wise are you? Wisdom, ability to know what to do, when to do, why to do, where to do, with whom to do. The lack of wisdom will ruin you. Marriage is failed for the lack of wisdom. Jobs are lost for the lack of wisdom. Destinies fail for the lack of wisdom. Poverty is a wisdom problem. Once wisdom is acquired, wealth and riches becomes your portion. Wisdom. So the Bible says, you must get wisdom. And as you get wisdom with all your getting, get understanding. Why? Wisdom is the principle. When you embrace the principle thing, you rule over principalities. Number three. Your world of possibilities is determined by your inner self. That means your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Jesus looked and he rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured that very hour. I prophesy to you, this year 2019 is your very hour. Whatever has been impossible with you will be possible. But look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Everyone read, want to go. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why has this journey been difficult? Why are we dying in the wilderness? Whereas the Lord said, we are going to the promised land. Why? Why could not we cast him out? Why could not we cast him out? Why could not we we, 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 we wanted to, we wanted to. Our dream was to get to the promised land. Our dream was to be the head and not the tail. Our dream was to become all that God promised us. Why could not? Why could not? Many lives with, live within this world of impossibility. The world of could not we. Could not we. Today, I change that word for you. Look at what Jesus said to them. The next verse. Jesus said, Ah, the problem. For your information, your problem wasn't the demon. Your problem was what was in you. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your inner world. Because of your inner world. He said, He said, they, they, they say something within you disqualified you. Something within you muted your voice. There are many people that have voices on the outside, but they don't have voices on the inside. There are many people, they are noise makers, they are not news makers. 
He said, because of your unbelief. And I said this, you can fake spirituality, but you can't fake the spirit world. Peter, you can keep walking on water so long as your eyes are on Jesus. The moment you take your eyes off of Jesus, it's only a matter of time you begin to sink. Because you don't sink because of the absence of Jesus. You sink because of what went wrong within you. That's why the scripture says concerning Abraham, he was what? Fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. So if your persuasion is not yet full, keep on filling it up. So when I come to Church on Fire International, or when I come to the presence of God, I'm not wasting my time. When I stay in the service, when I stay in the presence of God, I'm not wasting my time. What am I doing? I'm filling up my tank. I'm filling up my inner man. I'm filling up my persuasion because it's a journey. I can't just get full one day and remain full forever. That's why the Bible says but ye be being filled with the Holy Ghost. A present continuous tense. I'm full today. I need to be full forever. And in order to be full forever, I have to get filled every day. This is a journey and it's marathon, not a sprint. Don't get to one place and think you have arrived. Having that false sense of arrival, it makes you begin to act as See, you are bigger than God. Child of God, the faith you needed yesterday is good for yesterday's battle. Tomorrow's giant require a different dimension of your belief. So you need to be fully persuaded. Get filled with power, with passion, with fire. Build your inner world. It will give you the outer world. The reflection of your world your world or your world that the world you live in is a clear reflection of your inner world your inner self and number number five right number four your world of possibility is a reflection of your influencers the people that are influencing your life the people that are affecting your life the Bible says iron sharpens iron. Iron does not sharpen wood. Wood does not sharpen iron. Iron sharpens iron. Your association affects your acceleration. Your association affects your destination. Twelve men were sent out to spy the land. Ten of them agreed to say what? To see the battles in the land. To see the giants. Two of them. So in the kingdom of God, it's not majority wins the vote. Are you following me? This is not a democratic kingdom. It's a theocratic kingdom. Everybody can say, ha, ha, ha. That doesn't mean God is saying. At the end of the day, the voice of God is a voice that wins. Two men. Ten against two. To the point they wanted to stone them. Who are your influencers? The Bible says, be careful how you hear. Iron sharpens iron. When all your friends around you are those that don't take God serious, it's only a matter of time you will stop taking God serious. Well, I'm going to affect them. I'm going to affect them. If you're going to affect them, you can never solve any problem at the same level as the problem. If you're going to affect them, you must change your world. You must rise. You must rise. You must make sure that that voice of God through you is the real voice. A friend that tells you, it's okay, you can be a child of God, but let's go party a little bit. It's okay. God is not mad. It's okay. God is not mad. But Satan cannot be mocked either because Satan is smart. He kept telling the prodigal son, come on, guy. You have a little money there. Come on. Let's party. Let's joke a little. And the guy kept going further, further, further. He didn't know when he entered into a world. In that world, it was his wealth, his money, and the next world was his downfall. Remember, the last bus stop before the bus stop of what? Destruction is a bus stop of stupidity. The bus stop of stupidity is the last bus stop before the bus stop of calamity. 
when you come to the place of stupidity, very soon you will suffer calamity. That will not be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. So look at your influencers. Why could we not? All of the guys around them were impossibilities thinkers. When they come and the man of God prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, you will win the world for Christ. You will change the world. And they always have one thing to say, you know, we will change the world, but I'm, I'm too old to change the world. I'm too young to change the world. I'm too busy to change the world. And so Satan takes advantage and mess people up. And your influencers, the people that inspire you will decide whether you will have greater aspiration or you will expire. Life is superb. Why could we not? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Life's journey becomes so difficult and complicated when you don't understand that the things that influence your life eventually affect your world. Make up your mind not to live in a world others created unless if that world looks like the world you want to live in. I don't live in a world created by people that have feared or are married to fear. Job said that which I greatly fear has come upon me. I don't live in a world created by those who are self-centered. All they want is what's in need for me. No. If you are self-centered, your world will be so tiny. You won't even know that you are living in a toy world, a balloon world. And when that bubble bursts, it messes you up completely. I don't want to live in a world created by stingy people or greedy people. Greedy people who want everything that others have. Stingy people who can't give to people what they have. I don't want that kind of world. I want to live in a world created by men who are visionary leaders. I want to live in a world created by those who think the thoughts of God those who have settled within themselves that I refuse to live my generation the way I met it. Those who have settled within themselves that there is a prophecy I was born to fulfill. 106 years now, William Samuel prophesied the coming revival. Mother Maria Wuron Etari prophesied the same year. They didn't know they were both prophesying. 2000, I mean, uh, 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 1913. They both prophesied the same year. Said in 100 years time from now, there's coming a revival that will sweep the earth. A revival that will turn Azusa Street Revival to child's play. And with every move of God comes wealth, comes favor, comes promotion, comes authority. I don't want to live in the world of those that cross their legs saying one day, just one day, God will move. No, that's not the world I want. One day God will move. One day, when will that day be? I like the world of Daniel. He read, he said, I, Daniel, understood by books, the book of Jeremiah. He studied Jeremiah, said 70 years captivity. And on the 67th year, Daniel got into prayer. And Daniel operated in the realm of possibilities that the 67th year he prayed, the 68th year, he canceled the prophecy of Jeremiah. 68th year, the Israelites were out. They were free. They were free. God told Abraham, your children have been captive for 400 years. They stayed for 430 years. I don't like that kind of world. I like the kind of world that is painted in Isaiah chapter 64. That world is what I'm living for. That world is the world I'm living. I'm, I'm living in that world. That world that looks and says, Oh, that 
thou who does rend the heaven. Lord, we can't continue in a dark North America. We can't continue in a sick North America. So when I hear those testimonies of cancer being healed, I'm grateful to God. You hear all those things here. Miracles are happening here. I'm grateful to God. But that's not what God showed me. God showed me a world where 500 dead bodies will be raised back to life in one day. God showed me a world where sons and daughters will live without sickness. The Bible says if any is any sick among you, so it should become a strange thing for any to be sick among us. Poverty should not be among us. Infirmity should not be among us. I don't know the world the devil is forcing you to live in, but I'm here to say to you in the name of Jesus come to this world let God rend the heaven let there be miracles let there be signs let there be wonders it's a world of possibilities come to the world where what God told you that he will do with you begins to happen you open your mouth pray for someone and someone in China is being healed where you begin to heal the sick you cast out devils and you raise the dead come to the world where you become the lender and not the borrower come to the world where you are the head and not the tail come to the world where you are the employer and not the employee come to that world Oh, that thou won't rent the heaven, the RV. Oh, that you will see upon the heaven. Lord, your will must be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. There is no poverty in heaven. What men hold in higher esteem on earth, gold, is what people walk on in heaven. I say that again. What men worship on earth, what they hold in high esteem called gold, is what people walk on in heaven. In heaven, they walk on the street paved with gold. If they walk on street paved gold in heaven, I refuse to worship man made God on earth. The American system is amazing, but it has been configured in a way that no matter how much you love God, it takes extra sacrifice for you to be truly devoted to the call of God because many are chasing mammon and they're chasing mammon and they still have not been able to catch it. I want to say to someone, I can see in the spirit that what you are chasing will begin to chase you. Goodness and mercy will begin to follow you wealth and riches will be in your house you don't have to worship these things God wants you to have them I see that world and I invite you come into my world of possibilities where the heaven is torn open and the skies come down to earth he said then everything will change My time is up. Lift your hands. Well, we, we have entered into the second service and I know most of you are here for the second service. I just want to release grace upon your life. Lift your voice. We will rise in your name. do the kete ya. Adonai. You reign. Why could we not he said, bring him to me. I said, no, 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 no. Lift your voice and say, we will rise. In your name. God's desire 
two things God wants from you. Number one, He wants you to be dedicated, sold out. Now, dedication will cost you something. Christianity that costs you nothing will offer you nothing. God wants you to be dedicated, to be fully sold out. God wants you to understand that in this journey, no one has the right to decide your outcome. You have the right to decide your outcome. God wants to know that in this journey, that you are good does not guarantee you will get there. Because if you are good and God pulled you out of Sodom and Gomorrah and you turn back, you become a pillar of salt. That's why the Bible said, why should you die before your time? Ecclesiastes. Why? You don't, you should not surrender your destiny to the could not, cannot, would not kind of friends. No. Whatever dedication costs you, pay the price. It may not make sense, but sooner or later, God said all these people would be wasted in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb because they have another spirit. In the kingdom of God, majority does not win the vote. In the kingdom of God, consecration wins the vote. I'm devoted to God. No matter what comes my way, no matter the challenge, the, the distraction and the battle, I will obey you. I will worship you forever. I won't bow to the graven image. I won't bow to the graven image. I won't bow, Nebuchadnezzar. I will not bow to your graven image. Others are free to bow. I won't bow. I won't bow. And if you don't bow, you won't burn. Dedicate yourself. Dedication entails love that cannot be punctured or ruptured. Love that cannot be punctured or ruptured. John the Baptist had love, but one tiny challenge punctured his love. And that's what is killing many Christians today. Their love is like balloon, easily punctured. I would rather have love that is as tiny as a golf ball, but strong than to have love that is as big as yoga. I don't like yoga. Yoga ball and tiny pin punctures it, punctures it. Many people come to the house of God, but they cannot be proven. They cannot be tested. Even God is careful to test some of you. It took him almost 38 years to test Abraham. Go and offer your son to me. 58 years of working with God or so. Isaac was not 14 years old. Isaac was not. Isaac was an adult, real man. When Abraham went to offer him. 58 years of working with God. God said, now I know. Dedicate yourself. Build your inner man. Stay strong and stay focused. Above all, purify your motives. Your victory is tied to the purity of your motive. Wrong motive will, will easily get you offended when the test comes. Don't ever do anything for the title. Do everything for the mantle. Mantles have eyes. It is not title that tackles your battle. It's mantle that tackles the battle. I would rather be as strong as a golf ball in the hands of God. So when he hit me, the impact will not tear me. And he can shoot me as far as he wants to shoot me than to be a soccer ball. When you do, everybody sees a yoga ball. Everybody sees soccer ball. You see it, but go and kick. Even the best shooter, Ronaldinho, or what's his, this guy's name? Ronaldo. Messi. So is Messi's shot faster than Ronaldinho now? Oh, really? 
No, you are a mercy fan. I see. You see, mercy's fans are always partial. You see? But then mercy I'm his friend too. Yeah. You know? But you see, no matter how hard he shoots, his shot is limited. But with a golf ball, fuck! The only reason why golf ball goes faster is because it's harder. Be hard. Don't allow the hard times break you. Be a man, a woman of conviction, of persuasion. Stand firm. Having done all to stand, stand. On Tuesday, most of you will be stretched. Tuesday, 1st of October. My spiritual father is doing 12 hours in the presence of God. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We are doing 6 hours in the presence of God. He's opening the heaven. We are entering the heavenly open. But we have our own part to play. That's why we said our Shambok church will not hold on Tuesday. We're going to do our church here. It's 9 a.m. To, to 3 p.m. And I've challenged most of you. Call off from your work. Unless if you know that you have messed things up so bad. That if you call off, you lose the job. Uh-huh. If you have messed it up too bad. You call off, you lose the job. Then fix it. Don't come. But if you can call off. I'm telling you. It's better to secure your destiny in the spirit. So that this journey is not a journey you faint and die in the wilderness. You will not die in the wilderness. God spoke to me and I shared that with you. That none of my sons, my daughters, my ministry partners, those committed us, submitted to us. In Nigeria, by God's grace, I have over a thousand pastors that are directly submitted to me. Here in America, I have about 100 and something pastors, by God's grace. <coughs> and because I'm here in America, we'll go beyond that number. Very soon, we'll begin to have a thousand pastors. But the thing is that we will be here praying together on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can come with your food. That's the first day of October. And incidentally, or by divine coin, by divine arrangement, that happened to be our original anniversary. That was the day we started Church on Fire International. I want you to commit your heart, commit your spirit. Where God is taking you to is beyond your wildest imagination. I'm committed to your life, and the Lord said, none of us will go down. So you can't go down. It's impossible for you to sink. You will rise in his name. I don't you will Thank you, faithful God. I pray for your sons and daughters. I release grace. You've called us to live in a world of unlimited possibilities. You've called us to travel through life enjoying divine possibilities. I stand against demonic distractions. I come against the spirit of heaviness. I come against the assignment of the wolves. Wolves in sheep clothing. I come against the assignment of the foxes. Little foxes. I come against the assignment of the dragon. And the Bible says the dragon used its tail to bring down one third of the stars of heaven. I come against every assignment of the tail of the dragon. Assigned to bring anyone down. I say kick off it to give me it to la brediataba. Now I say in the name of the risen Christ, the same way no power could prevent Jesus from ascending. I decree no power will be able to stop possibilities. Rise and excel. Rise and succeed. Rise and prosper. Rise and excel. Rise and excel. Dominate North America. Dominate South America. Dominate Central America. Dominate the world. The greater one lives in you. Every sickness, disease, affliction, poverty, setbacks, negativity around your world. I rebuke them now. I rebuke them.
them now in the name of Jesus. As I said, what you reject, God will eject. So whatever is not and whatever should not be in your world, now you reject it, I reject with you, and we eject them. Out in the name of Jesus. Become all that God has called you to become. When I hear your amen, take your portion. Don't forget, be a responsible child of God. Let God see your secret world and your public world come together. Be a responsible child of God. If you want God to stay with you, you want to command his grace and glory, you must be responsible. In everything you do, be responsible. Be a responsible child of God. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his grace. Be on time in the service. Anything that is affecting you contrary, fight it. Don't settle for that world of impossibility. Because there's another world you can live in. That's a better world. Wherever you go, the soles of your feet tread upon that ground. It becomes your portion. Every difficulty with your career, your health, your finances, I rearrange them right now and I give you your testimonies. When I hear your amen, take your portion. You are blessed and highly favored. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a resounding amen? We might as well call this second service. <laughs> amen. Amen. I, I, I was fired up by the Spirit of God and I, and I see things happening. This month of, 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 of October is a very strange month. Very powerful month. Somebody say powerful month. So I might as well declare the month of October is a month of unlimited answers. Say unlimited answers. Say to your neighbor, my God hears and answers prayers. So we will teach about prayer. We will get us into the place of prayer. And then we have our power night uh, on the 11th, right? Our power night. And the theme is judgment night. We will be judging spirits, powers, forces. Everything that is holding you down and back will be judged. We will summon them to the courtroom of heaven. We will judge them. We will pronounce their sentence. And we will lock them forever. The angels that kept not their first estate, the Bible says they were judged. They are still in chain, waiting for everlasting judgment. So, so since you can't kill spirits, you can chain them. Are you hearing me? You can chain them, you can punish them. Those demons said to Jesus, have you come to destroy us before our time? You can deal with them. Amen? Our choir, as soon as we just share this, uh, I, I received the offerings and the tithe. The real diadem will just uh, go into praise and worship and we go to the next thing on the agenda. Uh, when our guest speaker comes for the second service, we will just continue. And we have a third service at 5, 5 p.m., which is going to be very life transforming. And I've asked people to come with their bottle of water. It's going to be a miracle you definitely don't want to miss. I appreciate God for your life, and thank you for being in our service. Go ahead and let's worship God with our offerings. Worship God with your offerings, your tithes, your vows. Please, you know those of you that are here for the first service, as soon as the service is over, you are blessed. You can go no matter see me briefly in my office. Uh, Minister Mama. Uh, but don't say, well, I kind of made the second service, the first service, so I can go, I think. That's not right came for the second service, you should stay for the second service. All the tithers, please come forward. If you have your tithe, come forward. Let's receive the tithe. If you're here for the first service, then you have to do that quickly. First service attendees, just come forward with your tithe and then uh, package your offering. Now, if you are like me that give offering in every service that I attend, that's great. But if, if you are a second service attendee, then keep, hold your offering for the second service unless if the Lord leads you to give an offering in this uh, first service. So this is for first service attendee. Amen. Lift up your tithe. All the tithers, please come forward. If you're giving with your card, kindly come forward.
If you can't come, you just let us know. They will come and serve you. Otherwise, come forth with your tithes. Um, if you have your vow, you come forth. Please remember, our anniversary is around the corner here. And uh, you saw the flyer. How many of you saw the flyer? Okay, if you haven't seen the flyer, um, can you project that flyer? Guess who we're having in the house? Reverend George Izungwa. The man is dangerous. All the way from Patakot, Nigeria. And guess uh, who else we're having in the house? Robert Lyadon. Ta, 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 ta. Look at that. It's coming. He said, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to coming. Because of the things God has been revealing to him. This man, the author of God's general. Make sure you join in prayers and everything. See, there's an army rising up. That's the theme of the anniversary. Lift up your tithe, your seed, your giving. And remember, we give towards the anniversary. We've asked families to give. So if your family or you don't have the green envelope, you should please pick it up before the service over or before you leave this service today. The green envelope is um, an envelope that you sow a special seed towards the anniversary. The budget of the anniversary is high. Our speakers and all of them are gospel artists and worshippers. They are all high. And the good news also is that our LED wall will be fixed this week by the grace of God. I like this one, they've assured us. Very, very. Our sound system, everything is already here. So please pick up your envelope. You give just a tiny mustard seed. If you are a single person, 150, 250, your family give to uh, 50, 500, 1,000. But I don't want to stop those of you that want to give one million. Yeah. Only two of us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And remember I said, if you feel pressured, then it's either that you are sacrificing to honor God. But if you feel pressured in the flesh, don't give anything. Just keep coming, okay? That doesn't mean you are not spiritual. That only means that you are not fully persuaded. Very soon, you will be fully persuaded. Amen? So we will, we will be patient with you. God is patient with you. But you always know that every time you honor God with your seed and sacrifice, you get major returns. Amen? God will honor you. Praise the living God. And we don't deny the gospel of prosperity. Prosperity is part and parcel of who we are. Amen? Uh, we don't take money for our own personal things. We take things for the gospel. That's why 12 years I served this church without taking any salary for the glory of God. So me, I'm not repenting for prosperity. 1,000. 5,000. <laughs> God bless you. Father, I thank you for this titus. I thank you for the new things you're doing. I thank you for the investments. I thank you that we could have held back and said, no, Lord, we want these people to just do and go quickly and we'll just be doing church as normal as usual. Then that would have prevented them from perfect, from being perfected, from flowing in that which you have ordained for them. But I thank you that you've ordained them for glory. So as I minister to them and receive their tithes, let the heavens respond. Let their destinies be unlocked. Let their miracles manifest in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. The Lord bless the work of your hands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless the work of your hands. 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 Oh, the green envelope is okay. I'll give it to you. Says the envelope. If you want that, God bless you. Amen. All right, let's rise to our feet. If you have your offerings for the first service, everyone please let's stand to our feet. Are we ready to praise and celebrate God? God. Are we ready to praise and celebrate God? All right, ushers, please, you will help us lift up your offerings. Say, Heavenly Father, here's my offering, an expression of my love for you. I release this in the name of Jesus. I believe my life, my destiny will never remain the same. As I release this offering, I receive that which you've ordained for me. Good measure, pressed down, 
shaken together, running over in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I release grace upon every hand lifted up, given to you. They will never come down begging in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I hear loud? Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Wave that offering so that the ushers can come to you quickly. Please drop your offerings. Pastors, ministers, please, you take your seat quickly. And uh, uh, if you're here for the very first time, we'll recognize you in our second service. If you're here for the second service, you're here for the first service. We love and honor and appreciate you. Can somebody shout amen? amen. All right, please drop up that offering. If you are ready, you are ready. Go forth and prosper in Jesus' name. Goodness and mercies follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. 2019. Greater works, greater works, greater works. I was born for greater works and so I you. We love you guys. Ushers, you're going to help us rearrange people as people leave. Just help us position others and pastors and ministers and everyone. God bless you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you excited about the Lord? Can you shout hallelujah? Lift your hands and say Father, I'm in your presence. I believe I will not return the same way I walked in. Visit me, speak to me, change my life, and glorify yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Come up. Lift your voice and pray that prayer. Lift your voice and pray. Pray as the first service attendees leave. In the second service, Reverend Andrew Bauer, all the way from Canada, will be ministering to us. So pray that there be a release of grace and favor. Please help us cooperate with the ushers as they are helping you so that you can just be well seated. Lift your voice. Pray that there will be a release of grace. There will be a release of power. There will be a release of impartation. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a good amen? Please let's all stand to our feet as we worship the living God. Amen. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Adonai. 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 You reign on high. Come on, sing Adonai. Adonai. Lift your voices and sing to the Lord. Adonai.
just know that only with Jesus you will rise in this life. Lift your voices and worship him. Worship the King of Kings. Oh, I don't know. Father God, we worship you. you to lift your voice, open your heart, and connect to God this morning. Connect to this holy moment this morning. Begin to sing to the Lord. If you can speak in your heavenly language, begin to pray in your heavenly language right now. For today is a new day for you. What God is going to do today in your life is a new thing. I want you to connect. Let your spirit connect. Let your spirit soar this morning. Register yourself in his presence today. Say, Lord, we're here. Oh, Jesus. Come on, connect yourself to today's service. Oh, we worship. We worship. Glorious God, beautiful King. Excellent God, I bow before your throne, glorious God. Bye. 
before your throne. Worship at your feet. I bow before your throne. You're the glorious God. I bow before your throne. I worship. Come on, I bow before your throne. Begin to worship him. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of Lord, Father God. We worship you. We adore your holy name. You're an awesome God. All the praises belong to you, Father God. We worship you. We lift your name on high. We give you glory. We give you glory, Father God. We worship you. We adore your name, Father God. You're an awesome God. We give you all the honor and the power, Father God. We love you, Lord. You're an awesome God. We worship. We just remain in that atmosphere of praise, of worship. The heavens have been opened, so let's walk in there. Let's just walk in there. Let's stay connected. God is in this place, and he's doing a great and mighty thing. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We magnify you, Father. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Welcome to Church on Fire International. Good morning. On behalf of God's servant, Reverend Dr. David Philemon, I welcome you to our, our glory encounter service. This is the second service of the day. You are also in our prophetic encounter program that we're having. And if you are not here Friday and Saturday morning, 
you missed a lot. I'm serious. God moved mightily. Things were broken. Chains were broken. We shifted. We moved to a new realm and dimension in Christ. Amen? God is set to do a new thing in our lives. And today, the last day of this program, I know God will meet with you in Jesus' mighty name. So even if you missed the first day and the second day, the third day you will not miss what God has ordained for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The theme is what? Possibility is the journey. And God's servant this morning talked about journey. Journey is going from one place to the other. It's going from one dimension to the other, one realm to the other. Journey is also a process. It's a process, amen? It's a process that brings personal change and development. Personal change and development. Sometimes it might be difficult. Why? Because it requires you to sacrifice something. It requires you to die. You have to give what you don't have. That's the process. That's the journey. We have many examples in the Bible of people who went through a journey, but at the end, what happened? They got to their promised land. They got to their promised land. God's servant also talked about the Israelites, the journey they took, how they wasted time in the wilderness. But that would not be our portion. Why? Because when God's servants, the two men that God has blessed us with during this program, when they come to complete the process today, they will take us to that place and we will remain there in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, we are going to take a look at two people in the Bible who went through processes that might have looked difficult, but they were able to succeed. The first one is who? Joseph. Joseph, he had to endure what? Envy of his brothers? He endured being a slave. They put him in the pit. He became a slave. He went to prison. And what else? At the end, God elevated him. And where did he end up? In the palace. We see that in Genesis 41, I believe. The process he went through. He went from the pit to the prison to the palace. From the pit to the prison to the palace. But he got there. Why? Because he endured. Because he endured the process. He endured the process. When we think of a diamond, it's beautiful, it's shiny. Right? We like how it sparkles, how it glitters, how it shimmers. But it has to go through a, a process. A process of extreme temperature and extreme pressure. Please be seated, please be seated. He, it has to undergo a process of extreme temperature and pressure. I believe the pressure... It has, to go about, it has to undergo about 100,000 atmospheres of pressure to be able to be converted from graphite to a diamond. It has to undergo thousands of temperatures in Celsius to be able to be converted from graphite, carbon graphite, to the diamond that we see that is so beautiful. So if you are going through anything, anything you might be facing that might look bad, and you're like, God, I cannot take this. Just remember, in order for you to be able to get to the destination that God has for you, you have to endure the process. You have to go through the journey. James 1, 2 to 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's the King James Version. I'm going to read the Passion Translation Version. I like that one. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. It stirs up power within you to endure all things. It stirs up power within you to endure all things. That's the journey. That's the process. If you know you want to get to the place 
where nothing will be impossible for you. If you know you want to get to the place where the heavens will be opened up, you will decree a thing, you will say a thing, and it shall happen. Then you have 